spring 1934, Ernst Röhm, leader of the SA, conducts his own version of Hitler's flag consecration ritual. Lance, the new Templars are the beginning of a new order. On the party day, Hitler receives the oath of allegiance from the new SA chief, Lutze. Party rally in September 1934 celebrated the new order. On the death of President Hindenburg on the 2nd of August 1934 and the confirmation of Hitler as President of Germany, the army willingly changes its oath of allegiance. Loyalty is now sworn not to the German state or to the constitution, but to Adolf Hitler himself. The death's head unit of the SS carried out the systematic extermination of human beings as the first step towards the new order in Europe based on race. A hurrah to the new order, community of the people. Volksgemeinschaft. No one could opt out. Everyone was brought into line with the new order. They called it Gleichschaltung, unification. Here, the spirit of the new order became a sensual experience for them. Here they learned that the individual was nothing, the community, everything. Subject to a new order. Largest of the concentration camps is Greeny, near Oslo. Its director, a sadist named Kutze, quickly introduces Hitler's new order to 20,000 Norwegians held here. In Berlin, they drew up the Axis Pact, the blueprint of the new order. It contained a recital of monstrous accusations against the United States, charging it, among other things, with preparing to attack Germany and Italy, two powers striving to establish a new order in Europe. Its total image, however, will be like a holy order. And for you to die under the banner of the new world order. In the under a united of global no government. Could be sure how many Mikhail Garbijov, that's the way I pronounce it, and George Skull and Bones Bush both but sang the, the phrases of the global government and sang the song and of the new world order. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. And that world order is only going to be enhanced if this newly activated peacekeeping function of the United Nations uh, proves to be effective. That is the only way the new world order will be enhanced. Our success in the Gulf will shape not only the new world order we seek, but our mission here at home. George Bush's vision of the new world order was that uh, countries could uh, unite in common purpose for the benefit of, of all mankind. Now, how the order creates war and revolution in this, that's Professor Sutton's latest work. He exposes yet another terrifying area of history, that the order is created and controlled for its own insidious purposes. And he writes, quote, there is no question that the so-called establishment in the United States uses managed conflict. The practice of managing crises to bring about a favorable outcome that is favorable to the elite and is freely admitted. Furthermore, there is no question that decisions of war and peace are made by a few in this elite. And this volume explores, volume explores some major conflict decisions made by the few in the order, and the way in which right-left situations have deliberately been created and then placed in a conflict mode to bring about a synthesis. And he clearly shows and reveals that when and why the order helped create and build the Soviet Union from the ground up to a world power. He goes on to name names, 
exposing those of the order who were in influential government and financial positions added freedom's number one enemy, hated him. He documents the order's financing of Hitler and the Nazis. He proves conclusively that World War II was not only inevitable, it was also very profitable for the few in the elite. From Harriman to Rockefeller to Bush, members of the order have been instrumental in the fermenting and the financing of wars and revolutions. But few people realize that George Bush was directly involved in the uh, financing of Adolf Hitler's uh, Gestapo and everything else. Well, so, not George Bush. Uh, uh, George Bush's father. S uh, Senator Prescott Bush. Prescott Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was involved with Brown Brothers Harriman. That's correct. And Brown Brothers Harriman was involved with I.G. Farben. Mm -hmm. In fact, Standard Oil at that particular time was fueling the Nazi U-boats during the war, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's why George Bush in 1990 came out with this language. And on the inside of their cult walls at uh, New Haven, Connecticut, at the Yale University campus, where the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death Tomb Building is located, they have Nazi swastikas and a uh, shrine inside, according to a magazine called Fame Magazine in the 1989 issue. Is that the Rosenberg? Uh, mm -hmm. That's correct. It's a terrifying thought to think that our children, our grandchildren, will simply be marked as animals in the New World Order. You showed me a picture of the new money manufacturing plant at Fort Worth, Texas. And upon the top is the Illuminati Pyramid. That's, that's correct. Uh, the building was designed just a few years ago in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And it's interesting to note that the symbol of the Illuminati, which we all see on the back of our $1 bill, is also signified in the architectural design of the building uh, out of which they're uh, printing the new. And as you've probably already told your audience uh, many times uh, prior to this, uh, it means New World Order. A more specific. But Novus Ordo Seclorum, that means the New World Order. And Anuit Septus yeah. means really our thing is well, crowned with success. It's, yeah, it means yeah. that as well as a, a more literal meaning. Uh, Anuit Septus means announcing the birth of the New World Order. And it also means that is crowned with success. Now, the Illuminati Eye, mm -hmm. the Eye of Lucifer, uh, the Eye of Horus. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Sun God Horus. Horus. Yes, the Sun God Horus. Uh, is also referred to as Agpu, the OGPU, which preceded the KGB under the reign well, terror from Joseph Stalin. That's absolutely correct, and the reason for that, as we now are able to see more clearly than at any other time in world history, is we're, we're about to see this new world order uh, translate into a uh, political system of world communism and fascism. And this is why Hitler used the term New World Order as well as uh, Gorbachev. Well, uh, Hitler's second book, the one after Mein Kampf, was entitled The New World Order. Exactly. Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer, one world, mm -hmm. one race, one ruler. Uh, the type of government that we have here in the United States. Well, uh, we've been slowly conditioned into a socialistic, fascistic system, Anthony, and uh, we're now about to be slam dunked with the in entire program which is global communism, fascism, and that's what the New World Order truly is. Communism. You know, the very, uh, very few times has uh, Clinton actually uh, mentioned the term New World Order, but you know what he did the day after the inauguration in, on the front page of the Los Angeles Times, January 21? He said, I, like George Bush and many of our predecessors, am dedicated to the Novus Ordo Seclorum. And there was a hyphen to space uh, the explanation afterwards, which they simply said was the beginning of the New Age. Uh, of course, we know, having been uh, educated in what Novus Ordo Seclorum truly is, and as we uh, explained previously, it means New World Order. So even though President Clinton is not uh, advocating as clearly as George Bush this coming New World Order, he's dedicated to it as well by, by being members of all the other cults that George Bush was a member of. Many different official trial auto commission publications have repeatedly advocated the destruction of the American standard of living in order to create a new world order. For instance, trilateral paper number 14, entitled Towards a Renovated International System, stated, quote, disparities in conditions between political entities can create obstacles for attempts to achieve a more effective world order.